Uh, you want to start? Do it up. Yeah. Um, you, you know, our video program really started uh, when they brought me down just to kind of, because I had extra equipment from a grant. It was a, really it was an after school program. Um, when I got there, one thing I knew I, I wanted to do, because I was coming from advertising, and I felt like everything was so meaningless. I was doing all these commercials for all these people, making lots, people lots of money. Okay. And I thought to myself, that's, I'm not getting anything out of that. Um, I live in an area that's completely riddled with problems, teen pregnancy issues, smog issues, there's also drug, uh, drug alcohol, gang issues. And I knew um, from my documentary history that I wanted to make sure that these kids could use the camera to impact change. Uh -huh. In the first year, we did a, a video about Alka Pops, you know, these sweet flavored drinks, uh, fizzy drinks. Mm -hmm. um, my kids felt like they were geared to them. And so uh, that first year, we attacked that problem. We won a Tally Award. We were honored by the state of California for that. And I knew right then and there, that's, that's the mantra for the whole program. You know, learn, learn video, learn, learn movie making skills, but then use it to impact that community that we live in. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's similar in Hollywood. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you teach at Hollywood High, um, you must have like celebrities' kids. It's like, no, they work there. They don't live there. So their kids don't go to school there. And so... Um, the kids that go there are, are ones that don't see that they're in just that the industry is accessible to them uh -huh. in their backyard. Yeah. And for me, I mean, my story just in a nutshell is that I went there and I went there for a film program that wasn't there by the time I started school. And it was there when I signed up for the school and wasn't there when I, when I got there. And so when I got offered the job, um, you know, I didn't originally, I was like, no back there bad memories you know because I hated high school mm -hmm. I hated high school because I wasn't doing what I love to do I had a really you know good opportunity when I was 14 I got to direct a feature film showed at Sundance and it was it, it was a great experience it was a blessing mm -hmm. but it was a curse because mm -hmm. I was then you know spoiled because I didn't have anything like that around me yeah. Yeah. and so when I go to Hollywood and um, they don't have that and jumped around another high school and I you know basically left high school early took a took a test to uh, to leave school um, you know get my high school equivalent diploma and started started college when I was 16 um, so I didn't have the same experience that all my friends did yeah. and so when I got the job I thought you know what it's a responsibility to it's it's my responsibility to not screw over any other kids like like I was yeah. you know right. and I have an opportunity to build a program that I needed to finish high school properly. Now I was, you know, starting college early, that's, that was a blessing, but also a curse, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't have a normal college experience either. Yeah. So it's just, um, just having that, you know, sort of connection. But in terms of um, my goals for the, the program, I want to make sure that <clears throat> um, LA, you know, starts teaching media the way, you know, Vegas teaches hotel management and hospitality, yeah. you know, right. you know what I mean? Right. because we don't, in LA, we don't, we have media classes and mm -hmm. but no one's like got it together. Everyone teaches on an Island and, you know, I'm trying to do my best to, to change that. But, um, the kids don't know that they have an industry in their backyard. And I mean, we're across the street from Panavision for the sake. Mm -hmm. you know, That's weird. They have like, no idea what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, um, and then, you know, we have similar urban problems. Yeah. Know, just like any of because it's considered an urban school. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, we're a little different at UVA. It's uh, the digital media lab is a kind of a, uh, a resource that we, we call Switzerland. We live in the library mm -hmm. and we're open to any student or faculty member and occasionally community members that, that want to use the facilities. Uh, Primarily, the closest thing I can equate our lab to is what was the, the word processing lab when I was an undergrad, oh, right? Wow. When we were using like DOS word processors. Because kids are coming in and they're doing their assignments in video. And so they have access to iMovie, they have access to Final Cut, they have access to Motion and Photoshop and, you know, they're doing... 3D on other platforms. They're they're doing you know the the things they come in with are just phenomenal. And 
the other side of that, the coin is that we've got faculty coming to us trying to differentiate their research through multimedia. So um, we just try and you know, be on top of exploration in terms of what options are available to them and um, pay attention to what they're doing because they're coming in with stuff that we can't, we can't predict, you know, right. it's just, it's, right. the, their yeah. innovation is amazing. And that's that's it in a nutshell. Like like what? Like you, you're talking about you, innovations you can't predict. Like you, they're just they're reinventing things as they um, with every with every new request. You know, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's you know, it's you know, it ranges from I want to do a documentary to I have kind of a a, a very complex multimedia project where video is an integral part of the storytelling, but there are other components that that will plug into. Um, you know, I mean, you know, like flash and that kind of thing. Sure. But um, it's video is their medium. Now and, and the computer is their medium, so I think, or I should say, not just video but audio is a huge part of that, right? Yeah. Um, and it's it's not the J school, it's not the English department, it's business students and nurses, and I mean, it, it's amazing what what these people are coming in to do. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, my my story, as you heard in the presentation, really started in sixth grade. I just, you know. I was one of those kids. I just wanted to be challenged, I, and I and I wanted to just live life, enjoy it, and 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 do things. And the Catholic school just didn't have that calling for me. Um, nuns just every day it was just a challenge, man. I mean, it's not the worst than being ridiculed in your classroom by your teacher, and it's unfortunate because then I became a little bit of a smart mouth. You know, it was like, you know, you left your ruler at the board, give five cents to the missions. I'm like, well, if I get that five cents to the missions, then I become the poor one. So why don't I just get my five cents back? We'll cut out the whole middle operation. <laughs> So, and that was a problem for them. And that was a problem for them. They just didn't quite understand my philosophy. But uh, from that challenge of, of just being called stupid every day and just that I would never amount to anything, and it was just uh, one of those things that never in my life that I ever imagined I would be an educator. Because then when I went off to high school, I went to Roman Catholic High School in Philly, and it was like the premier boys' high school. And I had a different set of challenges. Uh, I was from South Philly, and a lot of the kids were from Roxborough, Fishtown, and you know, it was constant battle every day and fighting every day. And it's just, you know, I was a straight A student with 160 demerits. How do you do that? You know what I mean? It was just, yeah. <laughs> they're like, we don't know quite know what to do with you. You know, you're like, oh, man. you know, and, uh, you know, the, the, the only outlet I had is I played the drums and I would tap on my desk all day. And then for some reason that made me the kid, you know, who was trouble. But they, they couldn't, they couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't do without the fact that I was a straight A student. So they're like, I don't understand your honor roll and you're our biggest headache. So, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, Spent uh, by 25, I became an executive producer. I was working for our local Fox, I was working for Comcast, I was working for uh, QVC, CN8. Uh, and I, I just found that in teaching my peers was my best asset. It was like I would direct the show, but when I could turn around and somebody said, Yo, how'd you do that? and I would say, Come here, let me show you, or here, I'll, I'll save it to a disc and give it back to you. And it's some, something triggered there. Went back to my old high school, to performing arts high school, which by the way, like. Boys and Man graduated from there and all these, you know, famous. Uh, actually, my math teacher's son is, uh, uh, what's his name? The red-headed dude, the short red-headed dude. Uh, Green. Seth Green? Seth Green. Yeah. I mean, you can imagine, it's yeah. like everybody who you could possibly imagine went through the school, right? Wow. So, so one day I was sitting there and I'm like, man, I'm producing television. This is cool. I just want to go back and see Mr. Rodano, who was my video production teacher. And uh, he retired. And I was like, wait a second. Oh, this teaching thing. All right. It, who replaced them? Did you find a replacement yet? And they said, no. No, no I'm sorry. They, they did. They had just found a replacement. They said, but we don't, he might not be long term. So if you want to, you know, just go, go downtown and see if you want. I, and then somebody turned around and said, no, they're hiring at Roxborough High School. That's Philadelphia School District. But uh, predominantly, uh, you know, I don't want to say affluent, but it's a blue collar area. But they had kids bust in. So I, I dealt with everything from, uh, you know, uh, minorities who are single family homes to, you know, uh, some families that were well, well to do. What struck me though, remember the story about the kids from the Sudan who they're half yeah. their family. Okay. I taught four of those kids and, and I would sit and talk to these kids and I'm like, man, there's something I could do here. There's something I could do greater than teaching video production. You know, I could change kids lives. And that just set me off. Long story short, went to a conference, presented what I was doing with the kids in the Philly and I just couldn't go anywhere. It was a shame because I, I, I enjoyed every process of the day. I just couldn't go anywhere. It was, there was no cameras. There was no studio. I would spend my time. I changed the ceiling uh, tiles myself. I waxed the floor myself. I paint the room myself. And lo and behold, I got this opportunity to teach at Middle Box. And since then, it's been just amazing. 
you know, get an autist, a, a autistic kid that produces his own documentary film before he leaves the program. And it's a powerful right. message. Yeah. To me, my new mantra in, in teaching is just get kids to empower themselves through media. And I don't care if they want to be a director, a producer, just empower them. Yeah. Right. I, I, I think that's the issue is that you, we sometimes forget we're even teaching filmmaking. Because it's like, it's the subjects that these kids are exploring. It's these, it's, you know, I always say it's like the autonomy of the, ex, you know, you give them autonomy to kind of do whatever video they want, you know, and it, it, under a small umbrella. Then you almost forget you're teaching filmmaking. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 they're investigating, they're looking, they're digging, they're researching. And then all of a sudden, you're, you, you step in and you go, hey, that might be better suited to be a close-up because it's such an emotional scene, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, good idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know. And that's, that's, the best, that's, that's the wonderful thing about what we're doing is I don't even know if sometimes I'm teaching filmmaking. I think it's sometimes almost unfair to call it that. Well, I wrestle with uh, the quality issues. You know, how far do we want to go down the road of you didn't really like this well or, you, you know, we talked about framing, but you didn't really apply those lessons. And, and for me, they're not formal lessons. You're not getting graded on this, but the impact of the products mm -hmm. is, is affected by that, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. a total taskmaster when so, it comes to that. Right, I'm right, constantly yeah. doing quality control and I'm constantly telling kids, yep, reshoot. And yes. I, it yeah. got to the point where we built the culture of, of reshoots being totally acceptable. You know, I tell them, I tell them <laughs> Failure. That. no, because, you know, yeah. because, you know, it used to be that, um, you know, the kids who had media classes before I got there would finish a rough cut and say, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. Mr. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, no, you just started. There's mm -hmm. this whole process of, of, uh, you know, doing, doing additional drafts and getting feedback. There's a feedback loop we got to go through. Right. And now, now it comes time to, you know, the kids go out and shoot in the weekend. They come back Monday and they're like. Here's some stuff that needs to be reshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and so like it took a while to build that culture because it's just you gotta you gotta expect a lot from them. Yeah, and right. and really build that up. But um, coming back to you know the idea of of you know teaching kids who who may not you know be filmmakers because right. you know they're not all gonna be filmmakers and why you know why do, why you do it? I mean, you do it because story is important in in every aspect of life. And I, I mean, I think there's, there's also, you know, the, uh, transferable skills of, mm -hmm. of uh, you know, of, of working collaborative, yeah, yeah. Work, yeah. working collaborative, mm -hmm. working, uh, in a collaborative environment, uh, scheduling things, getting things yeah. done on deadline, you know, those oh, yeah. are all really important things, but, you know, just on a sort of, you know, industry level, and, you know, something that's happening currently is that, you know, everything, the web is turning into a video wonderland. Yep. And, oh, yeah. and, and, yeah. and everyone needs video. Yeah. Everyone. That's where the kids spend their time. I, I just want to ask you guys a question because I, I know my philosophy, and I think maybe you've seen that in the workshop, is just go do it. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come back and I'll. This is, I, I use the analogy of driving a car. So I know nothing. I mean, literally, my brother once told me that flux capacitors would ram my engine at one point, I believe. And that's, that's, that's just how my own car You had a DeLorean? Yeah. <laughs> so suddenly, you suddenly found yourself in 1956. Yeah. Yeah. I, all of a sudden, the next thing I knew, I saw my future and I was like, dude, that looks bright. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I, tur I turn, you know, I, I get in a car and I turn the keys and I know to hit the brake and the gas pedal. And unfortunately, because that's that's as far as I needed to get, right? So we have mechanics that fix that problem. And I, the philosophy I have is when they walk into the classroom, it's like, there's the camera. Here's how you turn it on. Here's how you hit record. Mm -hmm. Everything else I just want you to figure out. Yeah. And then when they bring yeah, that footage it's back, true. it's like, it's what's wrong with that? Well, it's too bright. What could you do to fix that? Well, I could close the window. Ah, why don't we try to figure out how that's going to happen with you manipulating the camera? So it's more yeah. like exploratory. So I'm, I just wanted to know how you guys, is that how you guys do it? Or do you have like a, a formal instruction first? Like this is the iris, this is the zoom, this is the focus, that kind of thing. Well, one of the things I want to touch on is when they first come into my, into my room, I really, it's almost like a weeding out. I think, I think it's almost unfair to say. But I want, I make them, we really look at shots uh, mm -hmm. from 1895. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, and, because everything was in a wide shot, and then we move up through D.W. Griffith, and it was like suddenly medium shot, and then all of a sudden a close up. Yeah. I want them to know those things, and it's almost like research and history. And it kind of, the kids are sitting there anxiously, and they're like, I just want to record something. Yeah. And I purposely hold it back mm -hmm. because I want them to know these three basic shots, because, but I'm building on it. Yeah. And then, I don't know if you know this, um, AFI, uh, Years ago, developed this thing. This guy Frank Cutler. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Frank Cutler. He uh, he was with AFI. He's no longer with them uh, through their education department. He developed this thing called the Door Scene. Yeah, and you can find it online yeah. all the time. Yeah. and it's um it's a great it's a great project where kids go out and they you basically give them the camera and you're like, record somebody walking through a door, you know, and 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 then 
have fun. And they're just like, yeah. And as soon as they get to the door, they're like, I have no idea. Yeah. And they usually yeah. all shoot it in the wide shot. Yeah. And, they, and I love it because yeah. you, they come back and you go, what are you, 1895? What are you, the yeah. Lemire brothers? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 it's <laughs> funny. I have, I have a Lemire project that I, I'd heard that, uh, uh, I had heard that if another film teacher that I don't even know had done, I was like, I'm totally stealing that. And so, yeah, right. so I sort of, you know, uh, started, started doing something and I showed them Lumiere and company, showed them how 40 filmmakers, you know, mm -hmm. recently did Lumiere project and have them do that. But, um, and, and, but, but the twist is have them treat the video camera like a Lumiere camera. You can look at the viewfinder while you're, you know, like you're, while you're setting up the shot, but once you start rolling, you have to close that viewfinder. You better know what you're shooting. You better frame that well because you're not looking. You're not monitoring it. Yeah. And I can always tell it when they're monitoring it when the camera moves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's like ah, correction, <laughs> correction, correction. They, yeah. they always want to move. They always want to zoom. It's like, no, you can't zoom because uh, the pioneers didn't have a zoom. Yeah. This is see what yeah. they're doing. And, and with still photography, you know, we always start with prime lines. Yeah. Yeah. We always do. We say, you know, yeah. figure out what you're going to do. Learn how to plan. Yeah. Yeah. Learn how to think about what success means to you. Yeah. Right. And then visualize it right and and then figure out the steps to get there yeah. right which i think going back to the how how this applies outside of filmmaking because most of my students aren't going to be filmmakers although they will be making films right probably for the rest of their lives given the way technology is going right now sure so i mean it's it, apply, it applies you know to talk to what you were saying before when you when you spoke it it's about discovery learning you know, I want them to discover that when they double click, or, you know, they sometimes double click the, the record button. I want them to know all the mistakes they're going to make. I want them, I usually tell them, blow it, yeah. fail. I want to see the yeah. worst thing possible because have, do it now. That way you're, that way you're going to have a great year. Right. Yeah. You know, I want them. So that, so I agree with what you're saying is I want them to go out, just I give them the, the mechanics. I maybe tell them a couple things. I don't give them a tripod, yeah. you know, and I, uh, and I really don't talk about angles at that point yet. And I just say, okay, go. Go be, go be successful. Go be the filmmaker you want to be. Well, like I was saying, I don't think it's a huge deal, but I, I, I didn't finish the analogy of my car breaks down on the side of the road. I don't know the first thing to do except to pop the hood and say, I see smoke, right? right yeah. So when you think about it, if, if somebody would have put me in that environment where, you know, here, before you drive this car, take the thing apart, you know, and then put the pieces back together. Yeah, well, and that's kind of how I see it because I find... Sometimes, it, and, and I try to be entertaining when I when I lecture, and, I, and you saw my lectures more just hands on. But it still that's that's boring. You know what I mean? It's like let me go and let me shoot, and when they come back and they go now, how can I fix that? To me, that's them engaging themselves in a process in which they're going to remember it now because they had a purpose. And right. I think it, you know you know I'm a career tech ed guy, so I, I think that's the one thing we do. We always find purpose. We we define the purpose in learning in our environment. Yeah. But but I think that it still needs to go a step further. Even though I have a kid who's interested in being a filmmaker, there's certain things they're not going to listen to. So when they go out and they say, yeah, I, I had this whole lens family tree and how Uncle Iris did, relates to the. I mean, it was crazy. Nice. But but it was boring. I mean, it didn't matter how entertaining I tried yeah, to make it. Correct. It was still boring. So. Uh, it's like go out and explore. I send the kids in the parking lot. I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go out in the parking lot and make, make a film. Well, let me ask, how do you deal or do you have to deal with apprehension in students? Because I find some of my brightest students, and they're, they're young adults by the time they get to me. They're 18 and up. They're, there are some really, really bright kids that are afraid to touch the camera. They're like, well, I don't know, and I, you know, I, need, to, I need somebody to really tell me what to do. And that might be based on you know, the, the uh, educational background that they come from, where right. it's, it's more of a less of a hands-on right. thing. Right, right. How, do you experience that? And if you do, how do you deal with it? Yeah, I, I actually do want to talk about I, I wanted to answer that. Um, <clears throat> when, I, when I first started and we had gotten this grant to uh, build our program, um, the kids saw all the gear that we got and I just, you know, I laid it out, all out, you know, they come in first day, there's just all this gear hanging out just so they can see the oh, tools yeah, they're going right. to be working with. Like, this is all the stuff. Like, first of all, they question where the money came from, you know, really? <laughs> like, how does the school afford to do this? Did you, yeah. did you buy this? And like, out of my pocket? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> no, no, no. Right. I mean, no. Um, and you know, I explained to them, you know, your, your, your uncle Perkins bought it, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> good old Perkins, good, good, good old, good old Perkins. Carl Perkins. Um, and, uh, but they say, are we going to be able to use it? Or are you just using it as an example? Uh, yeah. And I said, yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, there yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. And yeah, but, um, and I've gotten a lot less of that, 
You know, they've gotten right. used to the fact that, yeah, yeah. We've, got, we've got good gear. And There's they start looking at other now. gear. Yeah, they start buying their own gear. And it's like now with, you know, like the T3i, kids are buying the T3i. Yeah. And I yeah, so, love so. it. I love the fact that kids are buying their own cameras now. And that yeah. it, it's incredible looking. Um, but I, uh, the best thing to do is just, you know, just leave, well, leave the kid alone. Yeah. Say, you, you know, you can choose not to do this and you won't accomplish the, uh, the project. And usually the kids who are, who are amper hats up about the, the gear are usually really, they're, you know, more shy kids or they're really it's, good at yes. academics, mm-hmm. but they haven't had that sort of. It's a different kind of learning for them, I think. Totally. totally. Okay. Uh, to, to go, to talk about creativity, that's one of the things I find the most uh, when kids come into my classroom is they lack it. You know, they, there's that whole thing with Sir Ken Robinson says, we teach creativity out of kids. And when they get into my high school classroom in ninth grade, I, I see it all the, all over the place. And it, it, I try to I try, I try to start with creative exercises, it's like really to kind of reduce the fear of looking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, so I model it all the time. I look ridiculous all the time, and I love to be able to yeah. because creativity is, is the key to what we're doing. Yeah. It's the key to that autonomy. It's the key to the to getting kids to go and create projects. You know, with um, at risk. You know, really risking themselves, risking their emotions, risking all these, uh, the work, you know, and uh, so I get kids all the time that this, they, they're frozen in fear. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I kind of spend some time kind of warming them up because think about back, even back in the early days, everybody's frozen in fear with, with, with new technology. Mm-hmm. You know, I do, also, I do believe that, um, that if you teach the technology, which really comes around to Final Cut Pro, you know, mm-hmm. and you teach the technology, I believe that it opens the door to creativity. When you when you aren't limited by fear of not knowing how to use the tool, then um, then you stop yourself from going like as Disney the big sky. You, you stop yourself from having the big sky moment. So I teach them the technology pretty quick, uh, especially with Final Cut Pro. That one of the first things we do is we I go okay turn on turn on this and then see that click click that Final Cut Pro and they're like what no iMovie no uh, no you know no on no online uh, editor you know can't we just go slow no. Why bother? Because I believe that once you start teaching, you, you have to teach that technology now. Because if, if they're with me for four years, they're pros at the end of it. Yeah. And then they can go get a job. Yeah. 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 So the question is, is anyone here frozen in fear about Final Cut 10? <laughs> I'm actually... <laughs> so, wait a second. <laughs> 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 okay. Wait, that I, made me a PC for a minute. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah, we, uh, we, we know that out. Yeah. But uh, I'm actually, I'm really excited about it. I was speaking to another um, pro apps trainer uh, from Ball State last night, and we talked about with our ADE projects, you know, we're, we're probably all the uh, the resident editors in our teams this week, right? And yeah. um, just because we know we can take that off everybody's plate, and that's, that's one of the ways we can best contribute to that team. Right. And so John and I were talking about this last night, and we, we were glad we didn't have it. We actually were able to, my first hands-on with it was helping another team with a graphics problem. And last we, night. Yeah, we had to troubleshoot it the same way you troubleshoot it in any computer editing program, right? They were panicked, but it's because they, they don't know video, right? right. Um, but the only reason I'm not using it this week is because, you know, we're all, we've all worked as pro editors here on Pro Gigs, and you don't. You don't just switch in the middle of a gig, right? And this 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 show was too important, right? Yeah, this we had to get this one delivered. But um, I'm excited about it. And John and I were talking about how we were paying attention to the things we were doing in seven that we had to spend more time on. You know, whether it was uh, you know doing log log and transfer on H.264 material, right? Which it would have right. really been nice to have that background rendered, or you know getting this all this odd B roll that had no meaningful metadata from our colleagues you know if, if I could have this is a two shot you know this is a close up there's a person in this you know or there's not a person in this yeah. or like most of it it's shaky <laughs> you know <laughs> so, so it would have you know it would that would have saved us tons of time and that's time that we could have spent being creative I, I work with a lot of avid editors that that are moving over in my life as a pro apps trainer and most of that work is just therapy you know I mean most of that is <laughs> is Reminding them that, Force that process. Yeah, that they're yeah. good at what they do and that the platform is relevant, but it's not defining, right? right. And and so you know, I'm really excited about the new product because I see how my kids work in the lab and they don't work even if they sit in on my pro apps classes, they don't work like we do. You know, they they oh, yeah. they take that machine and they mangle it. 
you know, and they do what works for them. And it, this is how people use computers. Well, right? that's the thing. I mean, that's that's how that's how well, most Apple software is designed. But Final Cut Pro, in particular, right, or legacy Final Cut Pro, um, you know, you, you look at it and you get and what I tell the kids, you know, when they first open it up, um, I say, do you do you feel like a warm tingly sensation in your stomach? Yeah, <laughs> is your heart beating a little fast? <laughs> that's the fear. That's the fear. <laughs> I say, I say, I say, remember that feeling. Because you're going to look fondly upon that yeah, in right. about a week when you're yeah. much more comfortable with it. Yeah. But the thing so I tell them is, like you know, um, I heard a, another trainer say, uh, you know, Final Cut Pro is designed for you, which is why there are three, four, even five ways of how to do any particular command. Yeah. So it's like any way you want to do it, you can. Yeah. But when we're teaching for certification, that doesn't mean you can't learn the other ways. Mm -hmm. You have to because you want to be certified. you got to really know the design of the software to do this, right. you know, yeah, right. but, um, you know, bring it to Final Cut 10, um, I haven't been too exposed to it. I mean, I, I, um, you know, I go to the LA Final Cut Pro users group meetings and, um, watched, you know, Steve Martin's, uh, tutorial and yeah. Larry Jordan's tutorial uh -huh. and, and, um, I'm really excited about the idea of teaching it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'll be honest with you. I don't know how excited I am about working with it as an editor, and it, it has nothing to do with. Uh, it probably has more to do with me just having an emotional yeah. connection with the software. Oh, yeah, having, having been with it for mm -hmm. for so many years, and it's been such. It's been like that. It's been my partner in creativity. For me, it's like somebody's retuning my piano. And, you know, the, the, a major scale, I'm going to have to play different keys to actually make that major scale come out. Yeah, right? yeah it's like I found myself, even when someone say, hey, how, how'd you just do that? I'm like, no, uh, hold on a second. Was, uh, I don't, because it's, yeah, yeah, yeah you right. just remember the keyboard yeah. strokes, and that's just the way it was. I mean, yeah. let me see if I do. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Hold on that's a second. Right. Let me, now watch. I'm going to look at the screen. I'm going to yeah. go like that. Now, what did I just do? I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But for me, it was like, you know, it's just, it, there was a lot of projects going on. I'm very anxious to get there. It's just, well, first of all, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be like six weeks without something to do. So I'll have more than enough time. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I'm, I'm one, I, I, when I get to it, I want to be on it, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think that's that's why it's not on my machine yet. I right. I know I could have installed it three weeks ago. I know I could have probably dabbled with it a little bit, but unless I know I'm going to have time to invest, it's going to scare me yeah. because then I'm going to learn bit by bit by bit. Right. L let me ask you guys a question. What's your usual process? I mean, we've I'm sure we've all had to learn various systems. I myself learned on on Media Composer and then um, you know looked at Division for like five seconds and then. Uh, learn media 100 then final cut yeah. um, and I had a process in which I mm -hmm. I learned all of them I cut a project that was due right yeah. you know and and uh, I learned basically by the fact that you know, fear the, no just because you had to you know Need. like yeah, I had it. deadlines I, right, had, yeah. I have mm -hmm. to get this project done that's yeah. how I'm gonna learn how to use it how do you right. guys how do you guys learn a new uh, piece of software, even if it's not editing, if it's like... I waste a lot of time, to be honest with you. I, I do. I mean, you know, I get it. I'm really hesitant about it because I'm like, well, I'm not putting this into my workflow because I got paid for this stuff, right? Yeah. And um, and so I waste time and then I realize I wasted all this time. And then what I do is I start digging into the manual. I start going to online tutorials. If it's going to be a part of my workflow, I try and take a class. Yeah. The reason yeah. I'm asking is because, I mean, if you're really self-aware about how you're learning, you know, you're going to be a better teacher That's if you cool. bring those, if you, even if you don't bring those skills and just like how you teach yourself, because sometimes you can teach yourself bad habits, mm -hmm. uh, as I, I do many times. Um, but if you can share that with, with your students and show them how you learn and some of them could relate. You know, and say, I learn like that too. I think that's, I think that's my attack plan with Final Cut Pro 10. Um, I, I really... I love I love modeling um, complete and utter destruction. You know, like like, like yeah. holy cow, <laughs> like uh, almost embarrassingly bad moments. You know, and, we, and then and then we just kind of go, hey, what are you gonna do? And yeah. I, I I so I'm I have a machine that I'm, I'm probably gonna load line, and I'm gonna go ahead and load uh, load up you know Final Cut, and then um, I'm gonna stick it on my desk, and I'm gonna plug it into the projector, and I'm gonna get kids to come over, and we're gonna. We're gonna start a project, uh, and and that's how I that's how I learn. I I, I start a project. I was gonna say it's interesting because when we were talking 
but I'm packaging equipment and stuff like that. Like I let my students make the orders for me too. I mean, I'm like, hey, we need a DSLR. I have my student research the 5D. Yeah, right. Why am I getting the 5D over the 60D? You know, and and that process, they all know. They all know what's coming. I mean, my students can't wait for the summer to end. They know what's coming. And I almost, I'll be honest, with you, I almost want to play dumb when they walk in. Yeah. Because I want to be like, look, I, ha I have not had the chance to get on this thing. Let's learn it together. You, I want to know how to ingest. You, I want to know how to cut in the timeline. Right. You, I want to learn how to layer effects and get that. So, I mean, that's probably how I'm going to approach it. At least that's how I plan on approaching it. Yeah. Right. Because, yeah, again, for me, it's that exploration for the kids and, and go through that process together. I, I've, I've seen that in, in English classes where um, that, that same technique where if you have a, a big uh, piece of text that you have to go through, you know, you split up, uh, you split up the chapters amongst yeah. different groups, right, have them yeah. work on it, uh, discuss yeah. it, mm -hmm. and then they're responsible for giving that information to the rest, rest of the, the class. Right. Yeah. Well, I think I, if they works yeah. really well, and if they're invested in those, I'm sorry, if they're invested in those wow moments that they have ownership. They're going to have so much more meaning, yeah, yeah. right? I right. Mean, yeah. And a lot of times, the, the kids will look at you like, "Hey, how come I thought you were the expert?" Yeah. Like, I'm not yet. I'm not. Yeah. That's right. I'm Soon, we're, we're not yet. yet. Yeah. And it's funny because you said, how, how do you learn? Believe it or not, when five came out, I read the whole manual. The whole, sure. I read every page of the manual, then watched the tutorials. It took me 15 years to figure that trick <laughs> out. Wait, yeah. It's better. I was like, yeah. what? what was I doing? I got, I got 25 kids that can learn each aspect of it. Teach me. You know? Yes, but yeah. you're right. That's that ownership. Then, yeah. then they're going to feel accomplished because they taught me something. I think that's, that's great. You know what? I, I read about you. I read about uh, the guy who read the manual. manual. Yeah. yeah. That was you? <laughs> I saw a movie about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty good conversation. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, yeah. I don't know if you guys are, but it sounds like you're new on. media section on iTunes. You man, that's you know, like I said, we gotta. I think this. I think now's the time. New product, new tutorials for teachers teaching teachers across all content. You know, I just want this, this right here can be like seven episodes already. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, good times. I, I think Tim wants us to wrap up.